Hi there, it's Ireland from SimonWood.com. Uh, I have five Spanish whites in front of me from various corners of Spain uh, with various grape varieties uh, in, included in the blends. Some of them you will be familiar with, Dear Watcher, and some of them you... Um, well, you'll probably, actually, you'll probably be familiar with most of them. I'll just dig in and see where we get to. Uh, first one is a familiar face. Uh, it's Torres Vina Sol 2011, and uh, I'm trying to think what they put in here. Uh, it's, I mean, it, it started off, uh, it's, uh, it's the grapes that they use in, in, in Carva. So I think, well, I mean, the, the Carva grapes are Macabeo, Chirello, and um, Pariada. And I've got a feeling that it's, uh, Pariada is one of the ones that, uh, that makes a uh, major contribution to this. I could be wrong, but it's usually pretty reliable. Uh, like if you're in a restaurant somewhere in Spain and you don't recognise anything. Chances are that there'll be this and uh, its red equivalent, Sangre de Toro, on the list and uh, uh, dig in there. They're usually pretty good. Let's see. I often think of this as like Apprentice Sauvignon, so it's got some of that um, uh, green pithiness, a bit of the grass, a bit of the nettle, uh, some of those citrus fruits, and a uh, touch of apple, and that's just what it is. It feels like it's going to be young, lively, fresh, sprightly, bouncy, perfect seafood wine. Let's have a taste. I haven't got any seafood here, but um, if I did have seafood, it would be the perfect wine. Yeah, tasty. Um, this green pithiness, it, it, it's, what, what's good about it is... The fruit flavours are there and they're zesty, uh, but it's light and it's live. I think it's just like 11.5% alcohol. Perfect. I mean, it's a really nice sunny day here. That's exactly the sort of wine that you want to uh, uh, drink rather a lot of. Sitting under a tree, of course. Oh, smothered in factor 84. Uh, let's see whether the next one is... Uh, so that was Catalonia. Um, and so the next one, uh, we're going way, way down south now to uh, Yecla. And this is Castillo del Baron uh, Macabeo. Uh, so one of the grapes that they use in Carver. Um, and uh, also known as Viora. And uh, so let's just give this a whirl. What, what does it say on there? Designed to be drunk, young, blah, blah, blah. I'm always a bit worried, worried when wines say that they've been designed. I just, I just want wines to be, to be. Let's see whether this just is. Well, I'll stick my nose in. I have to say there's a bit of STW. Spot the wine. Uh, it's feel, it smells, it smells young and fresh and uh, not, I can't say too much else jumps out of the glass. But uh, let's taste it. Maybe have a little bit more personality. It's okay. Um, it's fresh. Uh, it's vaguely citrusy, but um, I mean, it's a similar price to the Vigna Sol. The Vigna Sol is just that 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 that, that little bit. Uh, it's more zesty. It's more perky. It's got more flavour. Um, and so, it, yeah, as I say, STW spot the wine. Let's see whether we uh, in, when matters improve when we go to Rioja. Uh, so, wine number three is uh, uh, Cunet's uh, Monopole Rioja. Uh, 2010 Viora. I can't remember whether they use any barrel fermentation on this. Um, sometimes, no, made using cold fermentation and no oak. They do have some oak versions, which can be very good, but um, uh, sometimes, um, yeah, an oak Rioja can be just what you need. And uh, I some, I, I'm always a bit suspicious when, you, when people make excuses, oh, on a sunny day, uh, when you're sitting in Spain eating a pl plate of prawns. Uh, well, actually, most things would taste pretty good. Washing up liquid would probably taste good in such a situation. Uh, let's see what it's like. OK, it's a sunny day here, but uh, let's see whether uh, a slight change of climb from uh, the sun of Spain to the sun of the Pennines uh, makes a difference to the wine. Now, it's an oak, but it's got quite a bit of fatness and flesh here. Um, and uh, interesting that uh, the, the one from the south was 12.5%. Uh, this one from further north is 13%. It feels like they've, they've let the grapes ripen that little bit more. And in the process, um, it's, it, because it's further north, it's got a bit more acidity. But it's got this muskiness about it. So it's got this peach, it's got this musky pear, uh, it's got um, maybe a little bit of mango in there as well. Um, it smells, uh, yeah, it smells like it's going to be fuller and more interesting than one before. I think it's it's also a, a more ambitious price as well, but um, certainly it's got a lot more going on here. Yeah, there's a bit of creamy nuttiness. I don't know whether they've uh, kept the wine on the lees to give it extra richness, but uh, if, they, if that's the idea, they've succeeded. If there's anything I'm, I miss, and that's partly to do with the, the grape variety, um, there's um, I, I could do with a few more zingy bits in there. Um, so it's rounded, soft. Uh, there is a little bit of um, sprightly zestiness, but um, I want a bit more, and I want a little bit more mineral character coming through. So, fair enough. Um, I always want to put a splash of the Venusol in there. Um, for me, the Venusol uh, is a more interesting wine still.
Let's see how we get on. We've got, I mean, the, the, those are probably the lighter side. We've got uh, the last two uh, involve a grape called Ganacha Blanca. Uh, so, red Grenache you're probably familiar with, uh, main grape of Southern Rhone uh, and large parts of, um, of, of Catalonia. But there's also a white variety. There's also a grey variety, a Grenache Gris. Uh, but uh, this is Ganacha Blanca and uh, the wine is Altes Benufet Herencia. Uh, well, Herencia, does that Herencia mean uh, just uh, estate? I can't remember. So Her Herencia Altes, um, and uh, so 2010 vintage, uh, limited production, which of course, anything that's made in a limited production is better, isn't it? Yes, yeah, I mean, I'm never quite sure why people put on, oh, it's only a tiny production, because there are some wines made in small production that aren't very good at all, and there are some wines made in large production that are very good, but... Uh, um, apparently it's supposed to, uh, to sway people to think, oh, that's wonderful, though. Anyway, I'll shut up and taste it. Now, one of the problems with uh, Garnacha uh, Blanca is it's low in acidity. And uh, over the border in, in Roussillon, uh, they, there's a grape there called Bourboulonc that um, they, they, they pick them both at the same time. The Garnacha's at 14.5% alcohol, the Bourboulonc's hovering around 12. And the combination, uh, they, they, work, they work very nicely. Here, um, you, you, it's just uh, as a solo performer. So you're getting these fat, rounded peachiness. Uh, a little bit of uh, honey, honeysuckle characters. Um, it smells really quite quite exotic. Uh, if anything, I just miss a little bit of that. Uh, um, I was talking about perkiness earlier. I miss. I, I always wanted to put a splash of Venusol in here, but I do like the taste. Um, rounded, exotic. Um, Interesting that uh, the next one down is, is uh, a blend of Garnacha and Viognier because uh, it's got a bit of that floral exotic peachiness that, that's uh, in, of Viognier in here. Um, maybe um, if, the, if there is a, a what separates it from uh, from being Viognier is it's not quite as out and out fruity. Um, so um, uh, so yes, it's more oh I don't know clay like. There's these toffee characters, a bit of pineapple in there, a bit of these exotic um, yeah the, the peach, the guava, um, and uh, yeah, I, I, I really do like that. The trouble is, it's, um, it's, it's almost a winter white for me, that. Uh, there are, um, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really lovely hot day here. And uh, that's, yeah, that's the sort of wine I want to be reaching for with uh, creamy sauces on chicken in the middle of, uh, middle of winter rather than uh, maybe on a, on a day like this. But um, tasty wine, tasty wine. I think uh, favourite so far. Let's do the final one, uh, which is uh, La Bascula, uh, and it's called Catalan Eagle, uh, made from Garnacha Blanca and Viognier, Viognier in the Terra Alta region. So we're, again, we're in Catalonia here. Uh, let's give this a whirl. And, uh, it, well, the interesting thing about this one, well, lots of interesting things, uh, apart from the fact that it's got a... Well, the, the, if you, there's a guy called Bruce Jack, who was uh, uh, the guy who, in, who uh, founded the Flagstone Winery uh, in South Africa, which now belongs to a, a big corporation, but he's still in charge and still uh, doing some weird and wacky stuff there. And he makes this in conjunction with uh, an English master of wine called Ed Adams. And um, they, they make a pretty nice range. Uh, some quite quirky stuff. Let's see whether this is quirky. Well, there's a heady richness here. Peaches, cream, and uh, clay. There's, a, there's like a, a, a clay-like minerality. I don't know if you remember uh, doing clay models at school and you got that slip on your hands to, uh, uh, to make sure that you didn't stick... Your, your hands had a, like a feel for the clay, but uh, they, didn't, they didn't stick to it, but they were, they were still able to exert an influence. A um, bit of that character coming through. Um, yeah, and, and the fruit is there, the peaches, the pears, uh, going maybe into some of that more exotic, in, into the melon, but um, it, it's funny, it's too, it doesn't... It doesn't smell too viognine, for want of a better term. And then when you taste it, the apricotiness of um, the viognier kicks in. Really, it really does kick in. Uh, apricots, peaches, um, it's, it's quite pungent. Um, but um, interesting, it's still, it's still managing to keep a little bit of freshness in there. Um, juicy, as I said with the previous one, probably more a wine for autumn and going into winter than, than summer. But... Um, Tasty. Um, I mean, I, I mean, these these have been slightly up and down. I, I did like the Torres, and I, I, I like the final two. One's in the middle, okay. Um, but um, I mean, we think of Spain as a red wine country, but uh, honestly, keep an eye out for, for some of the whites. Uh, they can be terrific. I, there's this great Verdeco. I did a video. Did I mention them? Oh, I, I did a Verdeco video recently, and then you get all those weirdies up in Galicia, uh, Alborino, and um, Godeo. Uh, look, look out for, for new wave Spanish white wines. There's some terrific stuff out there. See you soon.